Hello and welcome to my channel, On The Hook Crochet, where we talk about wearable crochet style. And let's find out what's on the hook. Today, on the hook, lots of finished objects, so I need to get started pretty quickly. But before that, I want to tell you, you look amazing. And I hope you receive that compliment and enjoy your time with me here. If you like this video, if you know you're going to like it anyway, just hit the like button right now. Be sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed. I hope that you'll subscribe. A lot of my viewers have not subscribed for some reason. So if you want to know when the videos are published, then you need to subscribe. So I hope you'll do that right now before you forget just subscribe now today I want to talk about crochet wearable crochet and also diamond painting and we have a section of my videos always to show the progress I'm making on a large diamond painting that I always have on my easel so we'll get to that in just one second now first of all I am uh, releasing a new pattern today I sent an email out a few days ago to the community and you may have received that email in your inbox. I hope you did. And if you didn't, be sure to check it because I'm going to send it right after this video and you'll have that email. We'll have a substantial offer code for this pattern and any other pattern in my shop. So I am rolling out the new Cabana cover up. This is a, a very easy project to make. Let me get it up there. You can see it. That is the cabana cover up and I'm wearing it today and I'm wearing it over a tank top like I said that I would probably do. You can also make this longer and wear it over a bathing suit or just, you know, in the summer, however you want to wear it, wear it any way you want. I made it from 24 seven cotton. This is a line brand product. Um, it's all cotton. It's very comfortable, very easy to crochet. And I crocheted it with a G hook, which is a six millimeter hook and that's one of my favorite hooks in all the clover line. I love the J hook so when I find something I can make with a J hook I go ahead and do it and that is this uh, cabana cover up. I made this with a J hook, I crocheted it with a J hook. So uh, let me stand up and I'll model it for you. I'm going very casual today I'm wearing this with a tank top and uh, some B jeans and some little tennis shoes. I am uh, just puttering around the house doing some things and I thought I would just go casual so I'm wearing this over a tank top very very comfortable and actually I feel it uh, keeping the tops of my arms warm I know the air conditioner has been running heavily today because it's in the 90s so uh, I wanted to show you how I would wear this this is just a very easy way to wear it you can also uh, wear it over a bathing suit and you can also make it much longer if you want to a tunic length or even knee length if you want to uh, very very easy to make that change in the length and I show you how to do that in the pattern as well and here's the back the back is uh, it's right about mid hip length on me and that's uh, a good length for me because I am a short person best not to make things too long but this is a real good length for me I also uh, added probably four inches of ease not much not much ease because you'll find that if you make this out of 24 7 or any other probably in any other cotton yarn it will stretch it's a stretchy pattern so it's going to give and be very very comfortable to wear easy to crochet and not a tight fit so you don't have to worry about every single half inch but I added about four inches around the hips for the ease on this particular um, garment so just wanted to show this to you this is again the cabana cover-up and I hope you'll enjoy making it it's very very simple to make I've made it extremely easy for a beginner so you should be able to follow the directions very easily so I hope you enjoy. That again is my cabana cover up and this is out on my Etsy shop right now and I'll put a link to it down in the description box so you can find it. It won't be difficult so you can go down there and check it out if you want to. So uh, if you're in the community which I invite you to join and you just click the link down in the description box to join the community. If you're in the community you will have already received an email with that offer code in it. I'm also going to extend the offer code uh, for a few days longer because I'm kind of late um, rolling this out on a video. I did roll it out on email but not everybody gets the email so I uh, wanted to show it on my video and wear it for you, show you how much fun it is to wear. I really like it. Um, it's very very comfortable and very um, very stretchy so it's easy to wear and it's nice and cool in the summertime. 
Now let's talk about works in progress. I have a couple in progress, but I have this one that I had put away for quite a while and I wanted to get back to it. This is made from URU Yarn from Knit Crate and Knit Crate is uh, no longer in business, but I have a lot of their yarns and any size two yarn will work for this particular uh, project. I'm making it with a G hook which is another one of my favorites. It was certainly my mother's favorite, 4.0 millimeter. She made everything with a G hook. I think, I don't even know if she had another size, but she made everything with a G hook and used it a lot with um, worsted wool and worsted yarn. So I, you know, I grab it every now and then. I think, you know, I can see why she would like to use a, a G hook because you can make something with it and you can't see through it. And one thing I wanted to show you was, uh, of course, it's called Old Barn. That's the color of it, but it won't matter because they don't offer it anymore. So if you have some lying around, if you bought some or if Knit Crate sent you some, they would have sent you some of this um, in your Knit Crate box. And, you know, uh, that's how I found it, and I ordered a couple more skeins so I would have enough for a sweater. And I would have a sweater, what they call a sweater quantity. So this is what the yarn looks like up close. It's so, so beautiful. It is linen and nylon, um, a, a mixture of those two. Let's see, let's, let me be precise about that. 34 cotton, 35 linen, 19 lyocell and 11% nylon. It's a sport weight. So uh, it has a good stretch to it. Look at that. It, it I should say you can see it better that way. It stretches very, very well and it's pretty soft. It's not scratchy or anything. So I'm making a, a sweater from this and I'm almost through with the front of it. See, I am. Let me get these right. This goes to the shoulder. I'm finished with this side and I'm working on this side and I will probably put um, I will add ribbing around the top, uh, probably an inch of ribbing right there around the top. And let me get this again where it's supposed to be. <laughs> I have about maybe five rows, four rows left to do right up here on this shoulder. And then I will have the front completed. So look how pretty that is. That's a beautiful, beautiful tonal color. And again, it's called Old Barn and you can't find it anywhere. Unless you found it on eBay. Maybe they have some. In fact, they probably do, actually. I found a lot of yarn there that I'm uh, needing, and I, I find it on eBay. If you're willing to pay the price, sometimes it's priced normally, and sometimes it's not priced at a fair price. I think it's a little too much, but then again, you never know. If you need it, you need it. So here is the front of the sweater, and if you'll notice, I, I've talked about this in a few videos ago. Uh, I made it to, I measured my hips, and, the, and when I made probably four inches of this, I realized it was too small. It wasn't going to go from side to side with some ease, which is what I wanted. So before I went on, I stopped right here. Okay, I started here. This is the bottom of the sweater. I started here, and I'm, I went all the way to this point, and I decided to make it wider. So I turned the fabric this way. And I crocheted, looks like five or six rows to make it wider. So it was like that. It was that wide. Then I turned it back this way and I did some more rows this way, going this way. So that's what it looks like on the sides. So you can see it just a little bit. There's one side and there's the other side. So you can see how it... Um, was expanded on the sides but since I did one side I did both sides and I might if I get uh, rambunctious <laughs> I might do the back the same way I might add that little tab along the bottom so that it'll go from front to back I might do that that might be a nice touch but I am making this uh, at, sort of like an Agnes sweater it's not extremely hard uh, but if you're interested, this is basically an Agnes sweater. It's made with a number two uh, yarn, a sport yarn, and uh, with, a, with a G hook. So it's about the same density as the Agnes sweater that I've made many times. Well, I haven't made it many times. I've shown it to you many times. It's on my Etsy shop, the Agnes sweater. And this is what it looks like. You... Um, Actually, no, I should, I should correct myself, the Agnes sweater, yes, but I've also um, 
chained out for the sleeves on this so the sleeves are built right into the fabric right there um, it's actually this way if you want to look at <laughs> like it would be worn this is the sleeve uh, of course I'm not finished with it it goes about eight and a half inches that's the measurement from top of my shoulder to the un to my armpit plus about a half inch or an inch and that gives me the right ease for my sleeve opening or my armhole so that's how I measure it I usually do it that way and you can do the same thing just measure from the top of your shoulder to the underarm into your armpit right there and you can see that this is not done that way this is a very low opening here because um, it's a it's an over blouse so you don't have to tuck it up under your arm so much and also we'll tell you one other thing I forgot to tell you that this crocheted item the cabana cover-up is crocheted from the bottom up very easy to do if you follow my directions it's very easy to do and you also uh, measure accordingly so I tell you in the pattern how to do that you measure and then you there's there are no decreases and no increases in this top although we have a really nice neckline here and a nice sleeve hole opening um, that is not a function of a seam it's not any seams here except this one seam right there along the very top and that's it that's the only seam you have to do so I just wanted to tell you that I forgot to tell you that when I was modeling it uh, a few minutes earlier so again I don't know what pattern this is this is just <laughs> It's like the Agnes pattern with some sleeves in it. So if you're used to my patterns and you understand how they work, um, you can combine one and the other very easily. It's not difficult to do. So um, I will put the name of a pattern down here that might be appropriate for this type of a sweater. And most of my patterns you can make out of different yarn sizes and weights because they're all strictly done with measurements. So there are no stitch counts to keep up with or anything, no gauge to really make. I know that sounds too good to be true, but there are no gauges in my patterns, none. So you can make a sweater that fits you the first time, every time. So that is what I'm working on right now. It's a whip and I've made almost the whole front and I'll be working on the back this next week. And then I plan to work on my Annie's Afghan, my Moroccan Tiles Afghan. Um, if you follow me at all, you'll know that I'm making an Afghan with them in collaboration with Annie's. And they are sending me the kits and I am doing the Afghan Moroccan Tiles Holiday Spice colorway. It's quite gorgeous and it goes with my... Uh, it goes with my decor in the living room so that's why I chose that one even though it's a Christmas uh, Moroccan tiles afghan it's very beautiful and I do a video every month and you can check that on my uh, playlist Moroccan tiles play playlist you'll see it on my on my YouTube channel all right so let's move on and look at another finished object that I have if you recall last week I talked about hats and is it too early for hats no everyone said no it's not too early oh I had a few that said it was a little bit too early for hats and I totally get that but I wanted to start making some hats for Christmas and um, I wanted to show you how easy it was to make hats out of a, um, a different yarn the um, same pattern different yarn same pattern different yarn and just a different hook size so I said I was going to make one from the King Cole Aaron fashion yarn and this is a wonderful yarn I've already made the weekender from this that is another pattern on my Etsy shop the weekender I made that from this and it is gorgeous I love it I love to wear that in the wintertime over a black turtleneck and black pants it looks so pretty and uh, or a black skirt to church you know if you're wearing a skirt to church but you can wear the weekender over that and I made it twice I actually made it, made it once out of this yarn and I also made it out of scarfy and scarfy turned out really nice too so that's regular scarfy not the scarf not the scarfy size four but the scarfy size five the five weight so Anyway, this week I made a hat from my pattern, and I'll be releasing that pattern hopefully first of next week, and I'll be releasing that and showing you how to make it so easy to make, and you know, you may already know how to do this, but I thought I would write it down and put it out on my Etsy shop as a gift in the gift section, and it'll probably be in the hat section maybe. I don't know. It could be a gift for a crochet-worthy friend or family member. So here's what I made this week. This is the... Um, I think I'm going to call it Hattie's Hat, but I'm not really sure. Mr. On the Hook wanted to name it, so I might let him name it this week. But this is 
the hat that I made and it turned out so cute. I really like it. And this is the non slouchy version. I'm not slouching this. This is just a regular um, hat look with the folded over brim in the front. And I'll get it up there where you can see it. It's just got little ribs in it. It's really cute, easy to make. Um, doesn't even take uh, maybe a skein, maybe 100 grams of yarn. I'm not really sure. But uh, this is the size four yarn version. And if you look right over there, right there, those are the size uh, five bulky yarn versions of the hat. And it's made the same way, only with a different um, hook size and a different yarn. So this is the hook size K. So that's what it looks like. It's very easy to make. You can't fall off a log and have it harder than this, have it be harder than this. <laughs> to do. But this just takes a, a couple hours, maybe if you work at it hard, maybe three hours. Uh, pretty easy hat to make. And all you need is the measurement from someone's head. And I'll tell you all about that in the pattern. I'll show you how to do all that. And you don't have to have a size. Oh, is it a small adult? Is it a large adult? Everybody's head size is different. I have a kind of a large head. I don't know if you've ever noticed it, but it's huge. And, I, and it's not because I feel all so good about myself. It's just because that's the size head that I have. And it's bigger than Mr. On the Hook, actually. So uh, it's, it's strange how different head sizes are. So you can't really say, okay, um, I'm an adult. And so if I put on an adult size hat in most sizes, that would not fit me. It'd be too tight. So I need to make mine a little bit bigger. So... Um, I'll tell you in the pattern how to do all that. You don't have to choose a size. Just uh, measure the head and make it accordingly. So uh, anyway, this is the Hattie's Hat. Mr. On the Hook might rename that, but we'll see what it, what it turns out to be. But hopefully I'll have this out next weekend. You can take a look at it then. But this is the hat I made with the Fashion Aaron from King Cole. Very, very nice. Not sponsored by any of these people except for Annie's. I'm sponsored by Annie's, but not anybody else. Um, these are all my choices and things that I love to per, uh, to work with. Now, uh, last week I also talked about a blanket that I made for my ha hairdresser, and um, she's due to have her baby in a couple of weeks. I know I'm really excited for her. Gave her a blanket, and here's a picture of her, or this way, uh, here's a picture of her accepting the blanket from me, and she let me take her picture, and uh, we were uh, real excited about the blanket. She was perfect colors for her nursery, which are um, cream and brown and, you know, kind of boy colors, maybe a little blue thrown in there. So that's how I made the blanket. So I went to Joann's after I made the blanket to see if I could find some uh, speckle in a more adult um, colorway. And so here's a tiny video of what I saw at Joann's. I am at jo Joann's and I'm seeing this brunette blanket yarn. I just quickly stopped by here. They have the brunette speckle that I talked about last week with my baby blanket. Look at that. Oh, wouldn't that make a striking blanket? Beautiful, beautiful colors. Here's some other colors that they have. Here's the blue. This is Stormy Ocean, which is a little different from the the blanket yarn I use it's a multi kind of a multicolor and then they also have a green which is really pretty it's green and blue and that colorway if I can find it is right here and that is forest sage forest sage brunette blanket so they have a lot of different beautiful colors of blanket yarn here look at that just gorgeous all kinds of colors there's some pretty pink pink velvet and i when i touch this here i touched some back there but it's almost like it's cool it's so it's so soft it feels cool to your fingers kind of a weird feeling but it's beautiful and it's very very soft look at this color how gorgeous is that that is so beautiful I always have to look at the names of the colors. Uh, it's upside down. Golden Moss. Look at that. Oh, I just love that. I might need to find somebody that's having a baby. Make them a baby blanket. <laughs> Another one. Here they also have it in. Um, this is uh, the Karen Colorama Halo. This is a new product. I think I first saw it on 
another YouTube channel. This is pretty. They have the pink and the gray, and they have brown, and they have yellow, and pink blue, pink turquoise, green. They have quite a few colors of that. That's a brand new product. So very, very nice. I hope you like that. I uh, like to walk through Joann's every so often and take some video just of what they have available. And in the blank, the baby blanket and the velvet uh, yarn, I thought was really, really pretty there. Now, let's talk about diamond painting. I am painting a, 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 a huge diamond painting. It's 22 by 36. That's That doesn't sound large, but it is very, very large when you're placing tiny diamond drills on it. That's about 22 inches like that. Uh, and 36 is a yardstick, so that kind of give you an idea of how big the actual painting is, not the edging, but the painting itself. I took a little video of it, and I wanted to show that to you this week. Here's a look at the progress I've made on my diamond painting this week. This is Salvador Mundi by Leonardo da Vinci. Beautiful, beautiful diamond painting. And this is the bottom of it unrolled. I usually keep this rolled up, but this is the bottom of it, and I have painted all the way up and I'm moving across his chest now so I have the hand halfway done and across his chest I'm over here into the hair and I have two more little squares to go on this row and then I'll move up to the next row while I'll be working on the top of his fingers under his chin across there and then maybe a couple three more looks like three more rows after that and i will have it done so this is a very intricate diamond painting there are lots and lots of colors here i think there are 84 colors maybe um, a lot of this is going to be black if you'll notice all those little squares those are black and i will do those in uh, multi-placing so they shouldn't be too hard of course this is all very intricate in here all the colors on Jesus's face and then over here is another whole section of black so I'll step back and let you look at that that is where I'm going with this and these are uh, washi tape sorry I didn't mean to tell you these are washi tape I put these along the edge of the uh, area I'm working on now so I'll know where it stops and see when you pull this up, see, I put it there so I can see how far I'm going here. I don't have to guess if I'm in the on the plastic here or not. So that's just one of my little quirks. I don't like <laughs> having to worry about that. So I, I place washi tape right along the edge of the next section so I can see where I am. But stepping back, this is how much I've done. I have worked all the way up to right about there. So I'm excited. I'm starting to work up into the um, hair and into the face of Jesus. So uh, I'll be through pretty soon. There's hardly anything hanging over the top, maybe an inch above his head there. That's all there is. So uh, I should be wrapping this up pretty soon. So be sure you answer the survey I've asked you about. Um, I don't know if I asked you before or after this video, but I want to be sure that you tell me which one which diamond painting you'd be interested to see next and we'll see where we go from there so this is the progress i've made on south door monday this I hope week you enjoyed that i uh, love to diamond paint i do it every single night so uh, that's the progress i've made now what i want to tell you is uh, i was really looking forward to doing my next project i'm i'm working on this and when i get finished with it i'll take it to be framed and in the meantime i really like to start a new project i don't know what it is about diamond painting but i feel like i need to start something new right away because i just love to diamond paint so i do it every night for about an hour and i like to have it ready to go uh, when i take this particular painting i'll take it to the framers and get it done of course i'll show you the progress i'm making on that every week and hopefully i can finish that in the next month or two i shouldn't be too much longer than that but the uh, diamond paintings that are considering are two uh, romantic diamond paintings these are for all of my viewers and subscribers who like romance and i think we all do um, like a good story we like romance and so I am going to show you two photographs of two different diamond paintings that I'm considering doing. And let me show you the first one. This is the Meeting on the Turret Stairs, a beautiful painting of uh, two star-crossed lovers back in the medieval times. And 
Uh, there's a story that goes along with it, but it was so sad, and Mr. Onahook didn't think I should tell you about it, <laughs> so I'm not going to. But anyway, it's the story of two young people who fall in love. In the med medieval times, it was, um, you know, you couldn't even be around anybody else unless you had a chaperone. So I guess these were unchaperoned times. It looked like they were meeting each other on the turret stairs, and a turret, of course, is in a castle. The uh, tall... Uh, parts of the castle that are on each corner and sometimes not in the corners they're everywhere but a turret is a um, sort of like a cylinder that you can walk up in there the stairs in there are circular and so you keep going up and up and up and up and up and up till you get to the top and you can see out well apparently this couple was meeting on the turret stairs so I wanted to show you that picture it's very romantic I think it's the uh, the last time they'll see each other I'll just tell you that much so that's uh, one of the diamond paintings that I was thinking of doing and then the other diamond painting I was thinking of doing is the Romeo and Juliet which is so standard standard. Um, there aren't that many paintings of it though. I couldn't find very many paintings, but this is the one I really loved. And if you look at the picture closely, the um, beautiful surroundings of the two, the couple who are, look very romantic together, but the surroundings are so gorgeous. The architecture and the plants and everything around them is so beautiful. And her gown that falls to the floor, you know, it's a puddling on the bottom of the floor. Very, very beautiful painting. So I want y'all to tell me in the comments, comments which one you would rather me do next which one they both have beautiful colors I have to say the blue and the red are just gorgeous and the white stands out in the Romeo and Juliet I'm not leaning toward one or the other I love them both and I thought I would get some input on that even if I don't do exactly what you wanted me to do I hope you'll enjoy watching my progress but I will uh, have to get these ordered because I want to be sure I can start them as soon as I finish the Salvatore Mundi uh, by Da Vinci. So that is on my list. So be sure to put in the comments and if you're entering the giveaway you can put everything in there together. It doesn't matter. Now, I will um, look at those comments and maybe even take uh, uh, or survey and see who wants which one. So be sure you put down there which one you would rather me do first. Romeo and Juliet or meeting on the turret stairs, or you can just call it meeting. Romeo and Juliet, or meeting. You can do that, and that way I'll know which one you're voting for. Now the last finished object is the Agnes sweater, and I'm wearing it right now. I finished this up this week. I was so excited to get it finished. I'm gonna stand up and show this to you. Crystal had this on earlier, and she let me take her picture with it, but I thought I would model it for you. This is the Agnes sweater made with a the same size yarn that I used the first time, only it was a wool yarn, and this is a an acrylic, and I'll show that to you in just a second where it came from but this also has the ribbing along the bottom the ribbing along uh, the neckline if you were uh, following my, on my Instagram you will have seen this um, I, I actually posted a picture of it a few days ago when I finished it I was so excited to get that out there now let me show you the back the back is uh, it's it's the hem is right about mid mid hip and it's very uh, comfortable for me uh, this is, like I said, with the cabana cover-up, this is about the right length for me to make a sweater. Yours may be much longer than this. You might like crop better. I'm not loving cropped. I, I have made quite a few crop sweaters. But for comfort and for ease and for modesty, this is pretty much the length that I like to have. So I have no edging along the sleeve except one row of single crochet because I shape the sleeve so that it fits right around my arm and I don't have to add anything to it. Uh, the neckline is not really low either. I could have made it much lower, but I made it higher. This is a three by one rib. So all that is in the pattern. This is made exactly by the Agnes sweater pattern. So uh, let me show you the kind of yarn that I used to make this sweater. To make the Agnes sweater, I used Mary Maxim pastoral knits and I showed this last week, I believe. It's a size two. It's a size two yarn and it's uh, really pretty. It's a kind of a cream color and it has a dark gray woven around it in certain places. It's not all through the yarn because see there's some just some plain cream right there, but um, it's so, so soft. I was so um, just taken with this. I ordered it and I wasn't sure even what it felt like, but once I got it here, I realized that this had to be a sweater that I wear next to my skin. It's very, very, very comfortable. It's made in Turkey. 
and this is the colorway cotton and um, I'm not sure if they even have this anymore I went out to Mary Maxim and I couldn't find uh, two of the colorways that I had seen before but I did really love this I, I this is so versatile in my wardrobe uh, yes this is the colorway cotton I'm sorry there's the colorway right there cotton this has the dark gray in it and this is the um, the way it looks crocheted up it's kind of a mottled look mottled and there's the ribbing you can see it up close there it's a three by one ribbing very easy to do and it adds so much to the neckline uh, or to a sleeve or to the bottom of the sweater I did it on the bottom of the sweater here it's a three by one rib so um, this is a perfect sweater to wear um, alone or with a little black jacket or a black uh, lightweight uh, three-quarter length sweater you could do that um, that's probably how I'll wear it with a black skirt to church I probably would do that it's very 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 soft very soft and I would recommend this I hope they're not discontinuing pastoral knits uh, they might be sometimes when they get low on inventory that's what they're doing uh, this is hundred percent premium acrylic and you can tell it is a beautiful beautiful yarn um, very very soft and easy to work with too there were a couple places in here where the uh, the wraparound color the gray color um, was kind of pushed up and it came off so I just cut that section out and I just acted like I'd run out of yarn and then I added in the next part of the skein it wasn't difficult at all and I used two skeins of this um, I don't think I used anything off this skein no I used two skeins and I just had a, a, just a tiny bit left of the second skein so each skein and I'll tell you how much that would be it's, I think about six or seven hundred yards and this skein has uh, see if it tells me here it is it has 438 yards on it and I used right about maybe a couple of skeins a little bit less than that so probably um, 750 yards maybe for uh, like a size medium and you saw how long it was so that kind of gives you an idea this is the the pattern that I use is called the Agnes sweater and this is the one I made out of the um, uh, it's wool and a size 2 yarn it was kind of speckled and it's pretty I wear it quite often actually I really like that sweater it's it's fitted to you under your arm so it's it doesn't gap see it doesn't gap on the side right here I, tr I tried to uh, design it so that it would fit under your arm and not be um, cut in too far here so that you can wear your undergarment there and it not show uh, there were so many things I wanted to do with this particular sweater that would make it fit just you so that's what I did this is the Agnes sweater and I would recommend it if you have some number two yarn sitting around if you just go to Joann's and find some or order some from Mary Maxim um, not sponsored if you order some from Mary Maxim this is what I would recommend for it it's um, a wonderful wonderful soft yarn easy to work with and it's not expensive at all it was like maybe five dollars maybe four dollars for this and you only really need two and if you are a large person or you need um, more length or whatever you can order three and it's still not very expensive for a nice sweater <laughs> that you made yourself so there again I made this with a G hook with my G hook and that is a 4.0 millimeter in case you don't know that it's a 4.0 millimeter look I've got two projects with G hooks now so I'm working on that let's talk about giveaways this is the first giveaway gift that I have if you were interested you wrote the word cross in your comment and you would be in the running for this this is the August of 2023 cross stitch magazine and there are uh, so many projects in here there are 59 projects and here is the uh, visual list of what there's some summer things there there are also some July 4th things there there's something for the holiday there are fall things like look at that cherry pie right there this is the cross stitch magazine and if you're interested in this you would have put the word uh, you would have typed the word cross in your comment and you will win, win this so we'll get to this in just a second that is the first giveaway gift that we have the second is uh, one in about a half uh, skeins of Karen Simply Soft yarn in the colorway white. So pretty. 
Look at that. I love Karen Simply Soft, but I won't be using this, so I'm going to give this away to someone who wrote the word Karen, I believe it was. Yes, the word Karen in your comment. Now, this is 100 grams of beautiful, beautiful wool, and I think I, 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 think I bought this at a, a yarn festival, and for the life of me, I can't remember what it is. It's wool. It's, um, I don't think it's um, super washed. I think it's just regular wool but it is quite gorgeous and it's 100 grams it's a whole skein of that if you use the word wool in your comment you'd be in the running for that so that's a beautiful beautiful thing to get in the mail if you win and then last but not least is a frogger finish this is one of Jeannie's projects that she just decided she wasn't going to finish because she ran out of time and this is the um, sweater i believe it was a cardigan actually yeah i'm pretty sure it was a cardigan i was making um and i just decided i i didn't have the brain space to do this and everything else that i'm trying to do so i'm going to give that away that's a frogger finish if you want to finish that you can just kind of ad lib around the bottom and do fine with it or you can rip it out and use it and there's two full skeins of um, mary maxim best value neutral ombre that's what this is beautiful beautiful yarn love it made some things from it really like it but i have a little extra and i'm going to give this away and there's also a partial skein that i have wrapped up and so that was that is what you will receive those three things plus that little piece of whatever it was i was making and i'll leave the stitch markers in here and it's connected to the skein so you can just get started right away or you can rip that out and use it for your own project so so let's turn the camera to the computer and find out who wins these gifts this week here we are at the computer i've already loaded in the internet site of the video from last week and we're going to pick a winner. Let's see who wins the Cross Stitch Magazine. And that would be Kathy Randolph. Kathy Randolph. And there's the word cross in your, uh, uh, in your comment. So you have won the Cross Stitch Magazine. Kathy Randolph, congratulations. Okay, here we are back. And we have put the word Karen in the keyword filter. So anyone who used the word Karen in their comment would be... Um, in line for this particular gift. So let's continue on and see who wins this particular gift. This is 104 people and Barbara McCleary. Barbara McCleary, you have won the Karen yarn and there's her word right there. So we can see that she signed up for this. Barbara McCleary, thank you for uh, participating and let's check our next winner. Here we are at the computer again, and I have entered the word wool in the keyword filter, so we will be filtering on that word. So let's continue. And we had 110 comments of people who wanted the wool. So let's pick a winner. And the winner is Denise Robinson. Denise Robinson, you are the winner of this beautiful wool from, I don't know where. <laughs> it's 100 grams of beautiful wool. Here we are again, and for our last gift, the keyword was Mary, and that is for the Mary Maxim Neutral Ombre yarn and the Frogger Finish if you can, if you decide you want to do that. So let's continue on and find out how many people signed up for that, 138. And let's pick a winner. This is for the Mary Maxim Neutral Ombre yarn and the Frog or Finish from Jeannie. <laughs> okay, here we go. Cynthia Metcalf. Cynthia Metcalf, you have won the uh, Mary Maxim uh, yarn and frogger finish from Jeannie. Thank you all so much for participating. Thank you everyone for participating in the giveaways on my channel every week. I really enjoy doing this. I hope you are enjoying it as well. If you haven't won yet, hang in there. You will win because there's so many gifts I give away, at least three or four every single week. So you're bound to win if you keep watching the channel. So those are our winners for this week. Congratulations to our winners. Please send me your uh, 
address and I will get right out to you. I have a couple from last week that I have not sent because out in front of our house they've been repaving the road and our mail has not been being delivered. We have to go and get the mail when we park our car way around the corner so that we can get out and it's just been a hassle and I haven't packed those up yet but I will do that the two winners from last week and then hopefully I'll hear from these winners and y'all will send me uh, your address so I can get that out to you right away. So again, I've got two that are um, a little bit late, so I'm sorry about that. If you're looking for it, I will get those out to you as soon as possible. Now for next week, I have, as you know, uh, a, a subscription to Crochet World, and I also have one to Crochet, which is now out of business. So the Crochet magazines are now coming in as Crochet World. So I have two to give away for next week. So write the word world if you're interested in these. This is a huge magazine. They've revamped the Crochet World magazine. This is autumn of 2023. This is brand new, just out. And so many beautiful projects in here. Um, it's, let me tell you how, this is 97 pages long. This is well worth the price. Now let's see what the price is, $9.99. <laughs> That's a lot, $10, but you get a lot of uh, beautiful patterns in here. There are basket patterns. There's several basket patterns. Um, here's one I thought was really cute. This is a pattern that is made from this weird yarn, and they're calling it uh, Jelly Yarns Bulky Medium Worsted Weight Vinyl Yarn. Vinyl Yarn, never heard of it. I don't know where you get it but it's called Jelly Yarns Vinyl Yarn. And you can look that up on the Google. I'm sure you could find it. But I thought that was really cool. I don't know why you couldn't make that out of just a regular uh, worsted weight yarn. I'm sure you could. Uh, but there are lots of really great, beautiful, look at this, look at this basket. Is that gorgeous? It's an Irish country basket. I really love it and they've added the um, the leather handles on it but you don't have to put those on there you don't have to put any handles on it if you don't want to I love the circular basket it's pretty on the back of a um, a toilet top or a, um, on your makeup counter or something like that where you can put all your pretty makeup in there I really like that and this I really love this I love mug rugs and there is a mug rug pattern on my Etsy shop but nothing like this this is really cute um, I really love that that is so cute and they I think they made three mug rugs out of one cake of yarn and let me tell you the kind of yarn they used they use Lime Brand Ferris Wheel yarn, and I used to have some of that. I'm sure I gave it away in a giveaway. <laughs> but the Ferris Wheel yarn will make three of those, and I just thought that was really cute. Um, I'm sure you'll love it. This is a great magazine. I've always loved Crochet World. They have actually changed the look of their title. Here it is not the same as it used to be, um, and they've absorbed the Crochet magazine into their magazine. And one thing they are going to do is publish my pattern out in the fall on uh, online. It won't be in the magazine, which I'm really disappointed about, but <laughs> I wanted it to be in the magazine sometime, but um, they've uh, decided to put the crochet patterns in onto an online crochet world magazine uh, internet site. I'm not really sure how all that's going to work, and I'll let y'all know when it happens, but um, anyway, that will go out to a lucky winner next week. Now use the word world, W-O-R-L-D, world, and I have two, we'll have two winners for that. Two different people will win a Crochet World magazine. So, uh, boy, those are heavy. Almost 100 pages of beautiful magazine there. So that is our gifts number one and two for next week. Now I'm digging back into my beautiful hand-dyed yarns, and I'm going to give away some of them. Uh, this is Fatigue Green Peruvian Highland Wool, sport weight, 328 yards. There's 100 grams here, and it's Vitalana Ascendance by Knit Crate. Very, very nice yarn. Um, tight, beautiful, beautiful yarn. And I'm not sure why I stretched this out. I might have popped this thing off and I couldn't get it back on. That's probably what it was. I believe it's a whole skein. I'm pretty sure it's a whole skein of yarn. And it's made from wool. It's the chain, the, the chain yarn. You've seen this before. See that? You can see that chain on there. Love the chain yarns. They're very easy to work with. And this is uh, 
328 yards on the cake. Very nice. And it expands real nice too. I like it. I made something from this. I think it was a plain Jane top. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what it was. And um, I, love the, I love the feel of it. But I had a whole hank left over and I thought, well, I'll just give that away. So that will go to winner number three next week. And to use the word um, wool, W-O-O-L, wool, W-O-O-L. Just use that word and you'll be in the running for that. Now, I also made a sweater from this and you know I meant to look this up before I came to do my video and I totally forgot but um, this is also some hand dyed yarn and I believe this is from uh, Hobie or Ice I can't remember which one it might be Ice yarns um, but this is like a hand dyed yarn very very nice it's so soft um, I think it has some cashmere in it I'm pretty sure it does um, but it's beautiful and it's very very soft you can uh, make a hat from that or a pair of um, mittens or something like that really pretty really love that and if you're a knitter you can get even more than that out of it um, knitting goes so much farther than crochet so um, that will be uh, gift number four and use the word blue there just use the word blue because it's kind of a light blue with a little black and some peach thrown in there it's really a beautiful colorway I love that here is the sweater that I made from another colorway in this same yarn. It's the same yarn. It is so, so soft. It's very, very soft. I think it's cashmere and nylon or something. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And I've really enjoyed having this. I've worn it quite a few times and it's getting a little bit ragged. <laughs> I did wear it all last winter. But uh, this is what it looks like made up. It's really, really pretty. Very beautiful. And that will go to winner number four next week. So I just wanted to uh, show you that finished object. I do know that the sleeves are made right into the front and the back of the fabric. So, uh, and they're long, long sleeves that I made into the fabric. Very, very nice. You can do a little something with that. See if you like it. It's really super nice. So I hope you've had a wonderful, wonderful week. And uh, I'm glad you joined me today. Please like this video. It helps me a lot. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed and you can see more of my videos if you'd like. Um, I have 310 videos out there. Maybe more than that by now. Maybe 400. I don't know. <laughs> a lot of videos from the last four years so i hope you'll go back and look at some of the others they're all uh, self-contained there's no real continuation sometimes there is but mostly i'm talking about what's happening today so you can watch those and maybe uh, glean some information and be inspired that's why i'm here to inspire you to make wearable crochet and to diamond paint a little bit too because that's my second craft. I'm really, really enjoying doing that. So I hope you have a good week. So join me next time to find out what's on the hook.